All right, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, getting ready to get going here in the garage, but been getting some, uh, getting some stuff moved around, cleaned up, and trying to get a few things organized uh, so I can know what to do next and what, and what parts are where. But in the meantime, being that it's been so cold, trying to keep all, this, all my stuff started and fired up and running so nothing sits too long. So got this thing out, got some fresh gas for it. Got it fired up. that thing fired up so uh so it didn't sitting very long and running good as usual especially with fresh gas in it but what we're uh, getting into today is some last bit items i needed to get done that i've been slacking on on the 55 so as you well know if you watched the last video if you haven't go back and watch it we got the heads back so we are finally ready to start assembling the engine but before we get that thing back down in there, there are a couple things I need to take care of first. Not that they'll prevent us, but just stuff we want to do. So normally everybody always leaves Don the old trans mounts. It's just one of those things you always think, oh, don't cut those off. Might want to reuse them someday. Or you just always feel weird hacking the original stuff off, but it's never going to use those again. So not only to save weight, but to clean this up, I'm gonna go cut these off. So that'll be first order of business. And after we get those bad boys cut off, cause that'll be annoying. I think I showed this in an older video, but there is a spot down here we got trimmed out. It wasn't fully rusted out. It was just really soft in this area. So dad went through, cut out a uh, best rectangle we could. And we're gonna patch that in. So those are the two things I need to get knocked out before we get uh, assembling the engine and getting it set down in here. So after this, hopefully you'll see me hacking away at this. I might, I have an idea how I'm gonna get those out of there as easy as possible. So I might go over that with you next or after I do it or as I'm doing it, one of the two. All right guys, so obviously I can't get anything right up under or between there. So I think what I'm going to do is cut across here and same on this backside one, if I can get to it and then up the welds on the edges here. So kind of like right next to them. So I'm not getting into the frame itself and then see what entails here on the bottom, probably cut across the weld on the bottom as well. And that'll allow me to separate this whole section. It'll just be this top piece. And then it'll give me a bunch of room to get in underneath it and go right up against it there. So hopefully that works out. We're going to see. So hopefully hop in here and hit you guys with a little time lapse of getting this thing cut out and see what we can get. idea worked perfectly so did both the edges across those top radiuses pop that whole piece off and then left room just to get up here I had to cut the outside piece sticking out from here because that allows my cutting tool to get up here just a little bit more and I'm gonna go right up against the frame and uh, cut that last piece of plate off so 
Anyway, that's pretty boring, so we'll get this knocked out, get the other one caught up, cut off, and we'll check back with you guys after this nasty, dirty deal is done. All right, guys, got the other side lopped off, so we're good there. Basically, just have to go back and smooth the uh, edges of the old welds off and then paint it, and we'll be good to go. So pretty stoked on that. We had plenty of room with the trans in there anyway, but might as well save a little extra weight, get that bull crap out of the way and gives us plenty of more room where we can get to things in the future, such as the exhaust. It gives us way more room with the exhaust, uh, way more room working in the uh, clutch department as far as like your Z-bar and linkage and things like that. So anyway, that is out of the way. And dad found the correct lug nuts for the Craigers to work on these uh, studs. So I'm going to toss those on real quick. We're going to see how those look because that'll give us an idea of offset on what we're going to want for wheels. And it's just going to look way cooler for the time being. So let's go ahead and get those swapped out real quick. And that'll about do it uh, for my time in here today. swapped out and we'll give you a little look here uh, as far as how far they're sticking out it's like just about perfect in my personal opinion uh, now this is a super short tire we are which is why there's a big amount of wheel gap we are going to run a little bit taller tire and the, the, then if there's still too much room and you got to take in the, how much suspension travel there's going to be you know, under load and things like that. So you don't want to get things sitting too low and be hitting your quarters on the tires, especially when you accelerate. But uh, anyway, I think the look we're going for, because we are going to be running ball joint spacers up front and with a size tire, the cheater slick that we have on the Steelys, I think this ride height will be perfect. Uh, but like I said, don't, don't judge us on the height of these uh, tires because they are not even close to what we'll be running but just gives us an idea of wheel offset so we know what size, width, and uh, back spacing and all that to get on the steel wheels to fit this five inch bolt pattern. So anyway, without further ado, here it is. So ought to be perfect when you get the ball joint spacers on it. And as you can tell from the side, they're just barely sticking out past the edges of the quarter panel. So, just about perfect. And that also shows me that I got the rear end pretty much dead centered from side to side too. So, pretty stoked on that. And here's the old trans mounts. So I'd say with all this that we cut off, we we'll probably saved just about 10 pounds. So that's well worth the hour it took to get all those off there. But anyway, yeah, looks pretty good. But yeah, with the taller tire on there, it ought to look way better. So you know what? Might as well uh, roll one of these over here just to get an idea of what we're working with here. Oh, hey, head gaskets and whatnot for the engine, which that's why dad's not here. He is uh, getting all the head bolts and everything ready for the engine so we can finally make that progress we've been wanting to make on getting this engine together and getting engine mounts made and all that stuff. So, which actually there's the, there's the camshaft right there. So let's go ahead and roll one of these next to it and see what we got for height wise here, just to, just for fun.
All right, let's see if that'll stay sweet. So as you can tell, there won't be much, I know it's, this is hard to tell, but there won't be much room. It'll probably be, if you remember seeing uh, past videos when those wheels and tires were on there and how the car sat previously, that's pretty much how it will sit. So as you can tell, look at the significant height difference. But that ought to be perfect. I was just curious myself, so thought we'd roll that thing over there and see. That ought to be, ought to be choice. Very happy with that. This thing ought to sit pretty good when you get those tossed on it and get them ball joint spacers put on up front. It ought to, ought to have that exact look we're going for. So, well, this is going to be a little bit shorter one. I'm going to cut you guys short with this one, getting that stuff off there. Uh, next video, you can probably look forward to seeing the frame all smoothed out and cleaned up and hopefully start seeing some engine assembly stuff uh, for this car. So at least that's the goal anyway. So we'll see where we get. I'm not sure if there'll be another video in between uh, the next one. I'm sure I might throw something in from the shop. We'll see. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys then.